Koh Samui. What a f***ing island. When I first arrived in Koh Samui in 2022, it was my very first time abroad. I tell a little bit of a lie because the week prior to going, I actually went on a little warm-up trip to Amsterdam for a weekend, just so I got used to being in a different country. I hadn't been abroad because I suffered with really, really bad, intense social anxiety and clinical depression to the point where I would actually lock myself in my room for 12 hours a day playing video games and I'd have panic attacks at the idea of doing very simple things such as going to the corner store to buy some milk. So you can imagine how <laughs> difficult and crazy of a decision it was for me to fly to the complete other end of the world, to be on a tropical island in a completely foreign alien country, away from everything I know, everything that I love. When I first arrived in Koh Samui, I felt absolutely sick to my stomach. I swear to God, it is some of the most intense homesickness and deep stress and anxiety I've ever felt. I had no idea where the fuck I was or how to do anything. I was useless. And because of my social anxiety as well, of course, very simple things were incredibly difficult for me. I couldn't just go up to someone and ask like, hey, how do I fucking, I don't know, how do I fucking get out of here? How do I fucking go home? I was a complete dickhead to be around at this point, to be honest with you, because I was also very feminine at this point. I was very early on in my developmental journey as a man. So when things weren't going my way, I would complain, I'd bitch, I'd sulk, but I rode it out. I was stressed up to my eyeballs, but I continued with it anyway. I was literally thinking of booking a flight home. Imagine that. I just did a 12 hour journey and within the first week, I was like, I'm ready to sit on that plane for another 12 hours and to just fucking go home back to, you know, the bedroom in my mom's house. But I'm so glad that I stayed because that first week it was insanely uncomfortable and not enjoyable for me at all, but it didn't take me long to fall in love with Koh Samui, the island. It's such an incredible place. And my heart is full of so much gratitude for having spent the time I spent there. I can honestly say it is the most beautiful place I've ever been. Not just for the scenery, the beaches, the palm trees, but the people. I met so many incredible people, life-changing people, learned so much, grown so much. In Koh Samui, I had the absolute best moments of my life, but also some of the absolute <laughs> worst. But that island turned me from a boy to a man. And I always tell a story about how one day me and my friends Hamza, Jack Hopkins, aka CEO of Testosterone, Bill, we climbed this beautiful waterfall. And at the top, they jokingly baptized me into manhood. But honestly, if I was to look at my life on a map, it would be that period of time where I genuinely started to become a man. So that's a very symbolic story for me. Koh Samui is so awesome. It is paradise for men specifically, women too, but just think about it. You've got your motorbikes. The networking there is incredible. Lots of hardworking entrepreneurs, nomads, big thinkers, big action takers. But this is where my story shifts because the last month that I spent in Koh Samui, I was really <laughs> depressed. Can you fucking believe that? I was in paradise, but I was so miserable. And the reason why is because I felt so misaligned with what my heart was telling me. And I know a lot of men say this and they kind of, you know, fucking <laughs> role play being ultra masculine men. But I really mean this. My work means the absolute most to me. And what Kosamui started to do to me, I do well. I'm a successful fucking entrepreneur, young man as well. But I was up in a beautiful fucking palace, you know, overlooking this tropical island. And every day I woke up to that in my brain, subconsciously, I was programming myself to basically just think life completed it because I have everything I want. It is incredible. It's a very strange juxtaposition to be in. <laughs> being in such a picturesque, amazing place, but feeling so horribly miserable. I want so much more. I'm not ready to retire. I'm not complacent with where I am now. I still have so much work to do. There is so many 
other young men who are in their bedrooms, depressed, playing video games 14 hours a day, who don't realize that they can use their autistic video game energy into building an awesome video editing business. They could literally completely change their lives, much like how I've been able to do. They don't have to be depressed low testosterone, addicted to video games, addicted to substances, incredible social anxiety, no female attention, which is one of the most painful ones, to be honest. I have so much more work to do, but here I am in my palace, just sort of chilling. I'm chilling too much. Now, I worked very hard in Koh Samui. Don't get me wrong, but it was an uphill battle. My environment was not designed and geared towards me to ruthlessly attack. My environment was telling me to relax. And you only have so much bandwidth to fight against that before you start to feel very miserable and very misaligned. I wanna be very clear though, I did do so much good in Samui in terms of my work. It annoys me actually that people assume that if you're living on an island, then you're just chilling and you're complacent. I think generally speaking, a lot of people who live on the island, yeah, they're, they're generally complacent, but it is not impossible if you're a fucking savage. But it started to just get harder and harder for me. And the thing is, I'm here on this island and I've never really given myself permission to enjoy it. When I moved there and I launched my academy, I was there on business. For the first two months I was there, it was like, yeah, holiday, I'm chilling, woo. But since I moved back after the, launching my academy, it's pure business. So I haven't given myself permission to even enjoy what the island offers, the fucking beach jet skis, quad bikes. I did that stuff once in a blue moon. Koh Samui has served its purpose for me. Spiritual and mental maturity. I became a man on that island. I really did. But I think it's time for me to go boots on the ground. Life is too good in Koh Samui, actually. For the last month I was there, not only was I miserable, but I was just visualizing what my life should be like right now. What's right for me? And these visualizations essentially just placed me here in a fucking hustle and bustle, gritty, inspiring city, Bangkok, AKA Gotham. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera, but it is fucking ridiculous how beautiful this view is. I'm gonna take a video on my phone now and I'll put it on the screen for you to look at. It's just absolutely insane. How frictionless life is here, A to B, coffee, co-work, gym, home. <laughs> That's what I want. Weirdly, I kind of want to suffer a bit because I've been too chill. I know that sounds strange, but if you've been living on a tropical paradise island for a year and a half, you actually kind of want a change of pace. Life in Samui was kind of like a never ending holiday that I never fully gave myself permission to enjoy. This is what I need. Grind, hustle and bustle. And then, you know what? If I've done a good bit of work in the month, I can take a flight to places like Koh Samui, Vietnam, Malaysia, Indonesia for like 40 bucks, <laughs> which is insane because in London, I would pay 40 bucks to get in an Uber and drive 20 minutes away. Here, I can pay 40 bucks and literally go to a fucking paradise island. Actually unplug from my work if that's what I want. I do have a hard time doing that, I must admit. But the option's there and I can actually enjoy that time be present because all parts of my life suffered living misaligned my relationship my mental state my business everything i'm able to do this because of video editing i am beyond grateful to have found the gold mine that is video editing no one talks about how fucking amazing video editing is laptop bounce around the world work in a cafe here as long as you have fucking <laughs> wi-fi your laptop and a mattress on the floor, you know wherever you go in the world, you can print cash. You will never run out of money. So this is my overall message for you. Uh, I wanna give you some value, I don't wanna just yap. Your environment's everything, guys. If you feel like you're struggling and you're constantly swimming upstream, there is nearly a 99% chance that it has a lot to do with your environment and the people you hang out with. And if you've never left your hometown and you're kind of, you've got a lot of anxiety, you've got a lot of limiting beliefs, oh, I don't know about Thailand, 
I don't know about France or wherever you want to go, you know, up to you. You've probably got a bunch of beliefs like, oh, fucking hell, what if it's dangerous? What if this, what if that, you know? You'll never know until you've tried. You could be in your mum's bedroom, like I was, working at like 20%, if that, of your peak efficiency because you've never even known what you're capable of when you're working at 100% and your environment is serving you. And that is absolutely true, by the way. I'm certain that when I was working from my bedroom in my hometown, which is where I built up basically the bulk of my video editing business, I was literally working at 5% capacity. It's insane how inefficient <laughs> my work was and my mental state and everything. Yet, I was still able to build a $12,000 a month editing business. So fucking imagine what is possible if you're in a good environment. I cannot stress this enough. You watching this, consider this. Book a flight, go somewhere for a month. I recommend a month minimal, otherwise it's just basically a holiday. You wanna get a routine going. Just see what it's like, see if you like it. Worst case scenario, you had a month long trip to a beautiful tropical island or a city or wherever, and you probably had an awesome time you met some awesome people, you met some beautiful ladies. That's the worst case scenario, the best case scenario is. You love it so much that you're so inspired that you wanna stay there, that you just figure out how to make more money, assuming you're not already making big bucks. If you want my help in achieving financial and location freedom through the most underrated skill, video editing, I am your man. My academy changes lives. Look at this result here. Look at this result here. Look at this result here. I have a folder full of these. If you're watching this video and you're inspired, click the first link in the description right now. Take a look at the page, see if it's right for you, and you can see some more of my students' wins and their testimonials and see what they think of the academy themselves. I also have a sick new payment plan so that you can start now and pay later. Check it out. This life is fucking awesome, and I want that for you as well. Takosamui, thank you so much. You changed my life. You turned me into a man. Thank you for all of the fucking incredible memories. And thank you for being such an inspiring place and having so many inspiring people. I have met so many incredible lifelong friends from my time on that island. Click the first link in the description right now. Take care, guys.